Okay, so in this short video, I'm going to talk about antibiotic resistance as an example of natural selection. So when we look at bacteria, bacteria um, have lots of different roles on the planet, and most bacteria species are not pathogenic or disease-causing uh, to humans. And so we actually have quite a few positive relationships with bacteria and our microbiome. But let's pretend there's a, a, a time where you get an infection, a bacterial infection. Maybe it's a staph infection on your skin, maybe it's tuberculosis or pneumonia or strep throat or an ear infection. So you have bacteria that are multiplying now in you or on you, right? So a bacteria, um, actually multiplies very fast by the process of binary fission, and they can actually replicate um, about every 20 minutes. So bacteria are gonna undergo what we call exponential growth. Um, so their numbers can double about every 20 minutes, and one bacterium can multiply to become a 1,000 in about three hours. And as they multiply, they are copying their DNA and sometimes there's mistakes or mutations in that DNA replication process that create variation. Now, sometimes that variation might be a change in a gene that changes the protein um, in the bacteria, and maybe that's the protein that antibiotics target in order to kill the bacterium, but now that one, like you see here in red, that bacterium has a separate or like a different gene or a different DNA se sequence and protein that make it resistant to antibiotics, meaning that it doesn't die when exposed to antibiotics. So now as this next round of division happens, that one that um, has that mutation also makes a copy. So let's say at this point you do start to feel sick and by now you've gone to the doctors and you get prescribed some antibiotics. So you take your first round of antibiotics and it kills off a few of the bacteria. You take your next round of antibiotics and it kills off the bacteria. And you continue taking your antibiotics two times a day, three times a day, whatever the directions say. And then eventually though, the population numbers get to a point where you no longer feel sick. The population density of the bacterial infection has gone down and you feel fine and healthy, so you stop taking your antibiotics. You don't finish the full two weeks or the full 10 days or whatever was prescribed to you. Now the few remaining bacteria are gonna multiply. And again, by binary fission, they undergo exponential growth. And at this point, you start to feel sick again. You're like, oh yeah, I didn't finish my antibiotics. So you take some more, starts to kill off the bacteria. Now, the problem here, though, is that you had those few bacteria that had the gene for antibiotic resistance that made it where the antibiotics did not kill them. So they continue to multiply, um, and over time, like we saw before with like exponential growth, um, your bacteria that are resistant end up multiplying in number. So now when you feel sick and you go to take a new round of antibiotics, they no longer work against this bacterium or this bacterial species. And so antibiotic resistance is a very scary thing that is facing humanity. Um, bacterial species that we used to very easily take antibiotics and they would die, no longer die. And um, scientists and doctors worry about the evolution of superbugs where we get to a point where we no longer have working antibiotics. So um, when we talk about antibiotic resistance, as an example, let's go here, as an example of natural selection. So you have the population. Let's go back through this. So you have a population, and in that population, there's variation. Now, instead of like in nature, where you have like um, predators or something driving natural selection or food availability or whatever. Here, the selective, ooh, that was on a timer. So here, the selective mechanism is antibiotics. The antibiotics that kill the bacteria, those bacteria that die are the low fitness bacteria and the bacteria that survive and reproduce are your high fitness bacteria. 
And the selective mechanism was the antibiotics. They killed off the low fitness, leaving the high fitness bacteria to survive and reproduce. And that drives the evolution of the bacteria to be resistant. Now we have a couple of diseases on our planet that are pretty scary, like a staph infection is, um, there's a, a pathogenic or a disease causing uh, bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus that lives on the surface of our skin. Now, um, there are some strains of it. This is called MRSA, um, M-R-S-A, where the staph um, strain is like cannot be killed by bacteria or by antibiotics. And so um, when we look at the United States, uh, you find thousands of people die each year in hospitals, especially from staph infections. We simply don't have the antibiotics to work against them anymore because they've evolved resistance. Now, um, I know right now I'm filming this in the time of COVID-19 and the coronavirus. So hand sanitizer is being used like crazy. Um, and I, honestly, before this uh, pandemic, I... Uh, avoided hand sanitizer as much as possible and chose to wash my hands instead. Because when you look at hand sanitizer's label, how it says it kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Now here I have a hundred little yellow circles that represent um, a, maybe a pathogenic bacteria or just bacteria on the surface of your skin. And I didn't do a thousand, right? If I was only having one left, like 99.9%, .9%, I should have a thousand bacteria and only one survive. Here, this is 99 die and one survives. But my point is, when you use hand, san hand sanitizer, it's not 100% effective. So you leave behind those resistant, stronger, stronger um, germs and bacteria living on the surface of your skin. And those survivors are the ones who are gonna repopulate the surface of your skin. And so um, when choosing, the washing your hands over hand sanitizer. Uh, when you wash your hands, you're not killing the bacteria, rather you're just washing them off. So washing them off of your skin is not driving the evolution of resistant bacteria, rather you're just taking them off the surface. Here with hand sanitizer, you are driving the evolution of resistant and stronger um, organisms. So try and choose hand washing when given the opportunity between hand uh, soap or hand sanitizer. Okay, so the other thing we should talk about with antibiotics and antibiotic resistance is that as humans, we have this intimate relationship with thousands of species of bacteria. They make up what's called our microbiome. So in our intestines, especially, we have like three pounds of bacteria. We call this our microflora, our microbiome. Um, they live inside of us. And most of our bacteria is gonna be beneficial for our survival. We live in a symbiotic, mutualistic relationship. Uh, where some of the bacteria that live inside of our intestines and inside or on us could also be pathogenic. But we, ha we have bacterial species that we rely on for our overall well-being. Now, the reason I have pictures of cows and chickens on the left here is because the way we raise our farm animals, um, in America, we eat 10 billion animals per year. And as we learned in our populations unit, when you have a high population density, uh, diseases spread real easily. So when we have our cows or our chickens or our pigs really packed closely together, disease can spread so quick. And that's why right now we have social distancing to spread out uh, so that way we don't spread it as fast, right? But anyway, so here what we do in the United States is that we want our animals to survive long enough to slaughter them so we can eat them. So we feed our animals antibiotics in their diet, in their like daily food. So when we look at the United States, we actually, if you look at all of the antibiotics that are like sold in the US, 75 to 80% of them are actually fed to our animals. So our animals may not even be sick. And I don't mean dogs and cats and pets. I mean the animals that we eat. 
So now on a daily basis, we are feeding antibiotics to our chickens, our pigs, and our cows. And then as humans, we are eating those animals, whether it's a bacon uh, for breakfast or eggs or milk or cheese or hamburgers or hot dogs or tacos or whenever we're eating these animal products, we are exposing our microbiome, our bacteria that live inside of us to low doses of antibiotics. So therefore, we are killing off our good bacteria inside of us, driving the evolution of resistant bacteria. And this becomes risky when you look at the amount of antibiotic resistance um, showing up because of this. So here's a study from Princeton University uh, where researchers report that the growing appetite for animal protein in low to middle income countries has resulted in a smorgasbord of antibiotic consumption for livestock that has nearly tripled the occurrence of antibiotic resistance in disease causing bacteria between 2000 and 2018. And researchers found that antibiotic resistance in livestock was most widespread in China and India with Brazil and Kenya emerging as new hotspots. So in the United States, we've been doing this practice of feeding our, our animals, our livestock, antibiotics for a while now. So um, we also want to think about that when we um, kill off our bacteria by the use of antibiotics, we kill off the bad bacteria that's causing us sickness, but we also are killing off our good bacteria. So now think about um, population ecology. When, let's pretend that you eat a diet that's high in like I don't know, beef or milk or cheese or something. And um, you constantly are killing off your good bacteria that are beneficial to your happiness, your well being, your inflammation in your intestines. Um, the microbiome is so critically important for so much of who we are. Um, and then you kill them off. Now, if you have the antibiotic resistance bacteria are not killed, so you've killed off some good bacteria, some bad bacteria maybe, and then you have a few survivors that are not dying from antibiotics, they now have all this space because before there was competition for space on your insides, on the walls of your intestines. But now that you've killed off bacteria, the, the harmful bacteria have room to multiply, right? Like that, they re, we have removed one of those limiting factors of space for population size. So now if we look at how does antibiotic resistance happen, we have lots of germs, lots of like path like bacteria, um, and a few of them are resistant to being killed by antibiotics. So the antibiotics kill the bacteria causing the illness as well as good bacteria that protect us and help us. Now the drug resistance bacteria are now allowed to, allowed to grow and take over. Some bacteria give their drug resistance to other bacteria, causing even more problems. If you're an AP biology student or a College of a Biology student, when we talk about give, that would be through the process of uh, conjugation, um, or even if the antibiotic resistance bacteria dies through the process of transformation, some of those antibiotic resistance genes can be taken up by nearby bacteria by transformation. Okay, so when we look at examples of how antibiotics, antibiotic resistance spreads, let's look at the case of George first. George gets antibiotics and develops resistant bacteria in his gut. Um, and he uh, can stay at home or go into the general community and it spreads and it spreads throughout a hospital. And as more and more people get exposed to this um, antibiotic resistant bacteria, they also cannot defeat it by taking antibiotics. Now, staph infections in hospitals do spread or can spread pretty quickly because that's a bacteria that lives on the surface of skin. And this is why a lot of times you see nurses and doctors, um, they will use hand sanitizer like before they treat their patients or when they leave a room or something. And that's to try and stop the spread of staph infections. Um, so now though, we could also look at animals. They get antibiotics and develop resistant bacteria in their guts. Now that drug resistant bacteria can remain on meat from the animals. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you are cooking your meat to high enough temperatures to kill that bacteria. Or when you are like touching the meat to like, you know, cook it for dinner or breakfast or something. Um, you wanna make sure that you sanitize the area anywhere the meat or meat juices could have touched and wash your hands and try not to spread it that way. 
Um, sometimes we also will use like when 10 billion animals go to the bathroom, uh, that poop and pee can actually, or the poop and urine and stuff have nitrogen in it. So sometimes that uh, animal waste can actually be used for a part of fertilizer for crops. So sometimes when you see on the news, like E. coli outbreak on lettuce, E. coli only comes from poop. That's where you find it. Well, how did E. coli from poop get on lettuce, right? So that is when we use our animal waste as part of our fertilizers on our crops. And now if some of that E. coli is antibiotic resistant, um, you can expose yourself that way sometimes. And so make sure you wash your lettuce, tomatoes, vegetables, fruits, anything that you're eating that was grown on a not organic farm, uh, make sure you are washing. And so, um, yep, so when we look at antibiotic resistance, it is a real threat facing humanity. And one of the main reasons for it is um, our kind of like overuse of antibiotics. So the fact that we consistently use them in our food animal, the animals that we eat, um, constantly exposing ourselves to antibiotics, driving the evolution of antibiotic resistance is a real threat, as well as humans um, who are sick, maybe not finishing their full round of antibiotic and leaving just this, the resistant ones to like survive and reproduce, as well as when someone has a virus and they go to the doctors, they beg and they plead and they get antibiotics, Antibiotics only kill bacteria. Viruses are not bacteria. So if you have the flu or a cold or some other viral infection, antibiotics will not help you. So do not take those antibiotics. Um, do not ask for antibiotics for a viral infection. You'll only be killing off your beneficial good bacteria, making room for the harmful ones to now grow. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Um, and sorry, it's a little bit longer than I planned, but uh, hope it was helpful for you in understanding antibiotic resistance and kind of the importance of not overusing antibiotics. Now, as far as the animal and the livestock, if you are concerned about that, when you buy animal products like milk, cheese, butter, meat, um, you can buy ones that say on the package, uh, like no antibi like antibiotic free, like no antibiotics were used in raising that animal. And that's what I would suggest. Uh, okay. All right, good job. <sighs>